Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Fidget Tips and Tricks video. Since I moved to the UK, I have had the absolute pleasure of meeting some really gorgeous and amazing people in the Finnish community, many of whom are offering services or products to uh, vintage lovers here in the UK and around the world. And today I have a special treat because I have an interview with one such lovely person. I'm not going to get too much in details here. I will let the interview speak for itself. So I hope you enjoy this edition. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and tell me in the comments if this is the kind of content that you like and you would like me to do more of. There are lots of amazing people that I can bring into videos, interview, uh, do collabs with. So if you guys are into this stuff, let me know. Today I'm here with lovely Nana from Splendid Stitches. For those of you who aren't familiar, it is a gorgeous vintage specialty tailoring and uh, seamstress here in London. Nana, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your beautiful shop? Absolutely, thanks for having me, first of all, and I love your style today. So my name is Nana, as we just said, and I have been vintage clothes altering and fixing for nearly a decade, based in central London. And this is basically where magic happens. So people come to me with their precious pieces. It might be anything from a broken zip, a hem that needs taking up, you know, the sizing isn't quite right, lining that needs fixing in a beautiful old coat. And we put it right and make, make it look good and make it work for the individual. I think making it work for the individual is really important. Um, because we're all different sizes and shapes. Vintage pieces are all one-offs, so you can't go and get a different size of it. So if there's a piece that you really love, get it tailored to fit your body and then you will love it for much longer. So tell us a little bit about how you yourself ended up dressing vintage and why you kind of love for this specific style. Well, I think I probably got a lot to thank my mother for in this respect. I think a lot of us do. I have basically been wearing vintage since I was a teenager, yeah. maybe even before. Back in the days where it was just called second hand. <laughs> it was <laughs> That's so true. Yes, yes, yeah. Exactly. Um it was uh, basically because I didn't want to wear what was on the high street and all my classmates were wearing. It was cheap, um, which is good, so you could get more for your money. It was also individual, it was something different. And that was also when I started altering clothes. Since I was a very young girl, I wanted to be a fashion designer. Yeah. I started off with making crazy ensembles for my Barbie dolls when I was <laughs> six or seven for my mother's scraps and offcuts yeah. and that was then a natural progressing into learning dressmaking in uh, in my teenage years um, in I did courses and evening clubs and I'm from, I'm from Denmark and that's where I kind of learned that you also taught in school a bit and of course from my mother and uh, all the vintage clothes that I bought I would take home and fix if they weren't quite right I would yeah. take them in or add a bit of embellishment and it just grew from there but Splendid Stitches as a business came to me about 10 years ago and it was because my husband had bought more stuff on eBay <laughs> and he was like, can you fix them all for me? Nothing fits. And I was looking at him going, I can't quite be bothered because I am sitting watching telly and I don't want to get the sewing machine out. <laughs> and then he said, oh, but I'll pay you as a joke. And I was like, my, my thing with Splendid Stitches is I didn't realize that not everyone can sew. Yeah. And because I've always been sewing, I thought, oh, well, everyone can sew. And I was saying, like, hang on, maybe other people can't sew. And I have got a skill that I can share and make people feel much better about their clothes. So I started asking around friends and the request poured in. Everyone wanted to stop mended. Everyone had stuff sitting in their wardrobe that needed refashioning, fixing, new sips, hems, the lot. Yeah. So I was like, oh. Uh, maybe I have a business idea here and I set up a website and yeah. then the floodgates open even further and I've just been very fortunate that um, my clients keep coming back obviously because they, they like what I do uh, I have made some great friends through what I do yeah. and I absolutely love rescuing these beautiful pieces and making them loved by the people who wear them talking earlier about the experiences that you can have if you love your vintage pieces and then you take them to a dry cleaner or a modern tailor and they might think they've done a really great job because they've applied the techniques that they know and they are good at 
But for us, it's literally a nightmare and the pieces can be ruined by something like that. Absolutely. For me, the main reason why you it's better to use someone who understands vintage, it has many aspects to it, but it's first of all, people who understand vintage know that these, every single piece is special yeah. and that we want to preserve it as best as we can. Yeah. We know there's a reason why the shoulder pads are in there. We know there's a reason <laughs> why the bottoms are the way they are. Yeah. We know there's a reason why the cut is the way that it is. And of course it can be changed to suit the individual body. Yeah. Well, for example, for 1940s jackets, yeah. you want to preserve some of that silhouette. And if you take that to a contemporary dry cleaners or, or seamstress, they might go, oh, let's take out the those shoulder pads and just yeah. like make it a bit more contemporary. <laughs> that may not what you want. No. Exactly. So if you come to a vintage specialist, I instantly understand the silhouette you're going for. Yeah. We speak the same language. If you're going to a steampunk party or if you're going for a land girl vibe, yeah. I immediately understand what you're talking about. You're off to Las Vegas, that's fine. I know the vibe you're going for. You don't have to spend time explaining yourself. I instantly understand the culture and what we're trying to achieve. And then there's the technical aspect. Oh, yeah. So obviously knowing and understanding how clothes were made back in the olden days. Technologically, things changed a lot in the 1970s, of course, with suddenly things were much more mass produced, but pre then, clothes were generally made to order. Mm -hmm. And it's understanding the way that clothes were put together before the days of mass produced fast fashion. I guess the skill level as well, because people might know how to do the basics of sewing but might not have a great technique. So if you have something that has ripped sleeves, ripped seams, the wrong zip put in it, you can come and see Nana and she'll fix it, you don't have to give up on it. <laughs> see this is the other thing about zips actually, which is really interesting because of course here at Splendid Stitches we use original vintage yes. haberdashery. <laughs> so if you have a 1950s dress that needs a new zip, we have loads of old zips in stock that are from the 1950s. Good. So we will replace a middle zip with a middle zip. And actually only last week I had a beautiful 1950s dress where an invisible modern zip had been put in. <laughs> And we actually changed that back to a 1950s metal zip and it just looks so much better. Yes. For some people it really matters, for other people it doesn't. And that's why I will always speak to the client about functionality and practicality versus aesthetics. Because there are also technological advances in garment construction. So sometimes we can say, well, there's a reason why this 1930s dress has got hooks and eyes down the side. But for practical reason, you might want to put in a zip because you yeah. don't want to keep gaping open. So it's having that conversation as well and finding out, well, how can we make these clothes work for, for you in a way that means that we have a nod to the original, but also make it work for 2018. Yeah. And I guess not everyone that comes in to see you would necessarily be a real vintage enthusiast that wants the piece to kind of be a representation of the era that it was made in. Absolutely. They want to wear a beautiful piece. Yes. And I guess that's what makes the experience coming here different as well. You guys will get a little sneak peek of that afterwards, but coming here is not kind of like when you go to the dry cleaner, you just drop something off and you leave. You get to meet Nana, you get to stand in front of the gorgeous mirror, feel very special while you get all tailored, talk through the piece, why you want to wear it, where you want to wear it, and what your intentions are for the piece in exactly. the future, yeah. So that's something really, really special and makes a big difference. And I also wanted to talk to you, I know we chatted about this before we decided to shoot the video, but uh, we talked about like, sustainable fashion and the role of vintage in kind of, being a sustainable source of clothing? Well, absolutely. The way I look at it is that obviously vintage is the ultimate sustainable choice. Yeah. The clothes have already been made. You don't have to, well, maybe you have to freight halfway across the world, but the fibers and the fabric and the dye has already been done. Yeah. And therefore, the piece is made. You don't have to add to the pollution that is already out there. Exactly, yeah. Another thing that's really important to remember is that vintage, pieces of clothing are much better made than the majority of modern clothing you see yeah, today. So true. Not just in the way that they're constructed, but the fabrics, the actual fabrics. You have a 1950s cotton dress. The cotton is so malleable. It's absolutely beautiful to work with because it's got a higher thread count and everything is just weaved differently. It's the same on the wool coats from, for example, the 1940s. The wool is just more tightly packed. 
they're warmer. You have a modern day wool coat and you know after one or two seasons it's all bubbly and it's coming apart and it's wearing out. You don't get that on the vintage clothes just because everything was better quality and better made. Yeah. So it is an investment to buy vintage, it will last you much longer yeah. and therefore you will also wear your piece of clothing for longer which again make the piece more sustainable. Yeah. I feel too with vintage, the pieces, because they're really beautifully made, I want to wear them more. Whereas when I buy something new, I often find the quality of the cut and the fabric is not as good. And I'm excited from the purchase, that thrill of purchasing something new. But once I've worn it one or two times, I, re I start to kind of take the rose colored glasses off and I see it for what it really is. And then it just goes to the back of my wardrobe and I want to get that thrill again of buying something new. Whereas my vintage pieces, I get excited every time I put them on and I don't know maybe I'm alone in that but <laughs> I really treasure them all and they have a little story attached to them yes and that makes me want to talk about them when I wear them I want to tell people about it particularly if you meet other people that love vintage you exchange stories it's a conversation starter as well exactly I think that's really important so vintage clothes to me is clothes with soul yeah and that's the point I mean as someone said the other day uh, a next dress is never a conversation starter. That's true. This is very true. <laughs> but this is so true. When you wear your vintage, it is a conversation starter. Yeah. You go to, say, a wedding or a, a special event and you wear your vintage. People go, oh my God, that dress is amazing. Where did you get it? And off you go. And it's just great. You have something interesting to say about what you're wearing. Exactly, yeah. I was going to say, too, you don't necessarily have to come here with a vintage piece, do you? We were talking about reproduction items. Oh, actually, we're both wearing items that are reproduction today. And uh, we were talking about, you know, if you're not happy with the cut of something, if you've bought it online, that you can come here and get the piece tailored to Absolutely. something that was more what you envisioned. Absolutely. So yes, I have many clients who mix it up and have some vintage, some reproduction, of course. But yes, of course, we can alter the reproduction as well because it's all part and parcel of the same vibe. And sustainable too, because if you've ordered something that you know you're never going to wear, but that you might never get around to returning, you're not wasting your money coming and tailoring something that you'll then wear rather than leaving sitting in the cupboard. This is true. So I think people would be really interested in seeing what the experience of coming to Splendid Stitches is like because it is very different to the experience of going to any other tailor or a dry cleaner where you just hand something over and you head out of the store and you might hear back in a couple of days, a couple of weeks. Here you're coming, you get to meet lovely Nana, you get to have the experience of getting to know her, hearing about her store and also getting to stand in front of the gorgeous mirror very glam, have everything tailored to you and just, yeah, have an experience that is a bit old world and that you just don't get anymore. I think that's really important. I try to make people feel really good about themselves and their choice when they come to see me. I take great pride in taking people's measurement, understanding about the garment, understanding how it needs to work for them because that way we can do the best in the studio to make sure that this piece of clothing will work to its very best of its abilities. Absolutely. So let's let's show them what they're going to get when they come here. Let's do it. Okay. So I've got my, I'll, I'll let you guys know as well, I've got a new, new to me 1940s suit that I got hold of and whilst I love it and when I ordered it the sizing seemed to be correct, I do feel like it is a bit big around the bust because I'm not a big busty girl as much as I wish I was a Maryland shape. So um, yeah, I just wanted to see what you can do for me. Absolutely, so let's start looking at how it hangs on you. So I tend to work from the top down because when you do any changes to the top, it has an effect on what happens further down. Look at the shoulders, they're great. The line you have on your, on your shoulders and the sleeves is perfect. But I do see a bit of bulk here in the middle and I see a lot of bunching here as well. When you do this to your arms, I see there's a bit of excess fabric here. Yeah. So what I suggest first of all is to take in the side seams ever so slightly, but also possibly to take in the middle seam because it looks a bit hunchbacked at the moment and by straightening that we'll remove some of the excess here. I'm a firm believer that with vintage it's important to do just what's required rather than overdo it. So that is why I often ask clients to come in for first fitting or second fitting to see 
how does the garment look and then if it's not quite perfect we will go in and do more work just to make sure you get the right fit because we really don't want to overdo things it's very important these are fragile pieces so yeah. little step at a time so here we have a 1940s wool suit. It was originally bought for a song. It had lots of moth damage, which of course we often see with vintage. But what we've done to this suit is actually putting on loads and loads of embroidery to conceal all the damage from the moths. To be honest, it wasn't quite this much damage, but sometimes with embellishments, it just makes more sense to add a little bit extra to make it look really balanced, just to hide the original damage. This is a 1930s bias hot velvet gown. When it originally came in, it had loads of poppers and lots of hooks and eyes down the side. I spoke to the client about it saying, seeing as it was a party dress, she might want to put a zip in it at some point, but she went to a party then she came back a few days later and said, actually, let's put in a zip. So to stay fairly authentic, we put in a metal zip in blue, which just means that she can now wear it with a lot more security and safety. So this is a typical example of how a dress can just be made a bit more contemporary, a bit more practical for today's wear, but still being able to wear a really beautiful original vintage piece without feeling you might have a wardrobe malfunction at any time. Here we have a dress, probably an original wedding dress, we're trying to de frou through. What I've already done is change the neckline. At the moment it's just tacked in, it needs finishing. Because uh, the client came back just to try it on to make sure the neckline set where it should be before we finish it. So we're going to do that before she comes back for her final fitting and collection. Also took down the back where it was really high up. So lowered the zip and turned the back into a V. The next thing we're doing is shortening the hem. It was a full length gown. So it's just marked at the moment. I use a hem marker which means that a skirt is always taken up the exact amount from the ground all the way along so you don't end up with a wonky skirt and we're also going to take in the sides so with this you will end up with a really sweet cocktail dress when that's all done uh, but this was very much a case of changing the neckline and changing the skirt size and the skirt shape so this was a piece that i bought at internet the first time that i met her when we first talked about doing this video and it was a piece that i received from my grandmother who runs a theater group and had been used obviously for a men's performance and the pants were miles too big i could get away with the jacket it was definitely too big but it sat okay but i the pants were just out here they were enormous and i've had it for years i've probably had this piece for around 10 years and i just figured i would eventually one day get it taken in but I was so nervous that someone would destroy the shape of it because the thing that I love about it is that it's such a true piece. So when I came in and showed Nana the garment, she pinned it all for me and I was just so excited to see it coming together. The show sent so many emails to you like, I'm so excited, I can't wait to see what it looks like. So this is the final product. Um, if you want to chat through the, what you ended up doing today. Absolutely. So for this, you were saying it's really important to use it for performing. Yeah. So that was the first thing I thought was like, okay, how can we make it look fantastic and be something that you feel comfortable in when you're performing so to secure it and make it look good and also make it look feminine because this is a men's tuxedo yeah. and it was quite boxy. Yeah. The sleeves were very long and very wide. The trousers were massive. So the first thing I suggested was to narrow and shorten the sleeves. Obviously, as soon as you shorten the sleeves here, you, it gets really feminine. Yeah. And also just narrowing them down gave, gave the whole jacket a new femininity, which is just lovely. The other thing I suggested was to put in the hook and eye right at the front, which means you can actually do the jacket up. It's a bit more secure. It gives it the definition as well. The third thing we then did was to add some definition here to take in the side seams and also at the back to make it fit around the female shape rather than the male shape to just give you a bit more of a nipped waist. The trousers was a different matter altogether. What we did here, we talked about the waist because the waist was far too big. I actually took them in at the back. So we measured what B needed. 
and then I took them in here at the back, took in the seat as well, and lifted them from being sitting on the hip all the way up to sit around the waist, which also shortened the trouser length in the process and made them absolutely perfect when with a small heel. Thank you so You're much. Oh, <laughs> look fab. That's the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up down below. Don't forget I have a Instagram as well where you can see outfit posts. I also do IGTV tutorials that don't appear here on YouTube. And we always have the Vintage Tips Tricks Facebook group where we have an amazing vintage community that we would love you to be a part of. All of the links for that stuff are down below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.